Texas voter ID law is discriminatory. That ruling today from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which struck it down, arguing it violates the Voting Rights Act. The Texas voter ID law requires that all voters produce some type of identification at the ballot box. The law was passed by a Republican-controlled legislature in 2011. Supporters, like Governor Abbott, argue it prevents cheating. Opponents claim it discriminates against the poor and the elderly. So for now, the law is in limbo. An appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court is likely. And that is the topic of today's Point Counterpoint. Joining us again today, Matt Makoviak, Republican strategist and president of Potomac Strategy, and Democrat Edward Espinoza, executive director of Progress Texas. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Sure. Ed, we'll start with you. How key is it that this was struck down today? Yeah, it's a really important ruling. Uh, you know, voter ID is one of those issues that sounds great on a bumper sticker, but when you look at the specifics of it, it's really not that great, especially when you look at the, the law that only certain IDs are accepted and other IDs are not. For instance, a an ID for a gun license is accepted, but a student ID is not. And, and those are problems there. And really what the whole idea of voter ID stemmed from is that there was this thought that there was massive voter fraud in Texas. And really you've only seen 12 cases of it out of the millions of vote cast over the past few years and only two prosecutions in the end. Yet the number of people who are left without the ability to vote because they don't have the proper ID is 600,000. This is a problem. Matt, what do you say to this? I know Wisconsin and North Carolina have all passed similar legislation, but this Texas law is viewed as one of the toughest in, in the country. Yeah, it's actually modeled after the Indiana law, which the U.S. Supreme Court upheld. You know, the ruling actually, the judge panel, it's not the full Fifth Circuit. Uh, it struck it down, but it, not, it did not say it is not currently in effect. The Attorney General's office in Texas here today said it still remains in effect, and it did not agree with the plaintiffs who argued this was a poll tax. Uh, so they did disagree with one of the arguments the plaintiffs made. It, it was in violation of the Voters, Voter Rights Act. This will go, go, go forward either to the Fifth Circuit or to the Supreme Court. I think this will be upheld. The latest poll that I saw in, from the Texas Tribune, University of Texas, uh, I think in July, showed a 67 uh, percent uh, agreement with the voter ID law. So we'll see what happens, but this remains in effect, and I think ultimately it will be upheld. Uh, let's talk about General Attorney General Ken Paxton. He obviously is back at work this week after those three felony indictments. And then a federal judge today in San Antonio uh, has ordered him to appear in court uh, talking about possibly holding him contempt for violating a court order prohibiting the enforcement of the state's ban on same-sex marriage. Uh, how crucial are these cases against him, Matt? Well, the c contempt uh, hearing in San Antonio really has more effect on the former interim director of the Health and Human Services Agency. Uh, Paxton was giving him legal advice, but it was his ultimate decision. I think ultimately that won't be a big issue. On the, on the indictment, you have two first-degree felony counts and one third-degree felony count. What's interesting about the two first-degree felony counts, which are securities fraud uh, allegations, uh, they basically say that he uh, did, not, uh, did not state a fact to the investors. He did not tell them he was not personally invested in the company he was seeking to get them to invest in. To me, that's a pretty unusual reading of, of the statute. I don't know whether that's going to ultimately hold water. The third degree has to do with whether he was registered with the state securities board. He had registered in the past. That registration had expired. Obviously, this goes forward. He's not going to resign. He's going to defend himself to the fullest extent of law, and he deserves that because an indictment is not a conviction. Ed, uh, just very quickly, we we're running out of time here, but what does this mean? I know a lot of people concerned that we've now had two state indicted on these various charges? Uh, three, if you go back to the head of the Cancer Research Fund. But yeah, it's disappointing. Three felony indictments for a sitting attorney general, not something that anybody wants to see, not something that even Democrats want to see in their leader, but it happens. And the, that's really the problem is that this, these are issues that have been known about for a long time, and Republicans had an opportunity to investigate them and to do something about it, and they didn't do it. Single party rule is not good because uh, there's, no, there's no check and balance. And in this case, here's a perfect example of why it's probably better to have a Democrat in office. Ed, Matt, we always appreciate your input and we look forward to the next time. Thanks. Thanks. We're back after this.